In today's video, we are going to be learning about uh, baking inside of Substance Painter. Now, before we jump into baking in Substance Painter and learning what baking is, uh, we have to go back a little bit in ZBrush uh, just to clarify some things. First of all, uh, we'll see what baking is in a minute, but most of the time uh, when we are done with the character, we want to proceed with texturing the character and uh, moving forward in the pipeline, we would have to have uh, at least the low poly version of the character with all of the UVs unwrapped and one high poly version of that same character. So we have two versions of the character, one that is low poly and, it, and it's uh, ready to be inside of a game and one version that is the high poly of the uh, character. So we have one, one version that's low poly and one version that is high poly. Uh, in the low poly version, all of our uh, all of our different uh, models, pieces of the character, should be named uh, appropriately and with underscore low. So everything in our scene should be, for example, this one is the cap, so cap underscore low. This one is the goo, so goo underscore low. Now if we go to the high poly, we have cap underscore high and we have goo underscore high. This is not a necessary step, but uh, it will uh, increase the quality of your bake uh, tremendously. So it's a good practice to have everything named correctly. Another thing that we have to do, uh, not only with baking, but with Substance Painter as well, is we know that we have to have UVs. So it doesn't matter where we, where we create our UVs, we can create it inside of Maya, we can create them inside of ZBrush. The most important thing is that uh, we have UVs on every single one of our assets. So everything in our scene should be opened up like so. After that, uh, we can jump inside of uh, inside of Substance Painter and we can start to bake our character. Uh, first of all, we already went over uh, baking once, so uh with when we did the octopus so we kind of have an idea of what baking is but uh now let's see it uh, a little bit more in detail okay so now let's create a new substance painter project so we go to file go to new in the file we select our low poly character so we scroll down and we find our low poly character we open it up a template is not important for now but we are going to be using the unreal engine 4 in the future so let's uh, set the template to unreal engine 4 as well document resolution i would set it as 2k for now but we can always upgrade to 4k if we need it so for now let's just set it to 2k and leave these as it is so direct text and leave these checked uh, we don't need to use the UVTL workflow and we don't need to uh, auto unwrap our character. So let's click on OK. And it should open up our scene like this. Now, once we have our character inside of Substance Painter, we can see that it is the low poly version and the same one we have in uh, ZBrush. So how do we make it to uh, look like the high poly version? Now uh, this version has around 7 million polygons, so only the cap has around 2 million polygons. And now we want to transfer all of these details onto this character. Well, to do that we have to bake the character. So uh, let's just rename our material for now, let's just rename it maybe to Mushroom Man Material like so and let's bake our uh, textures so uh, there are a couple of, of ways to bake we can go to texture set settings we can click on bake mesh maps we can also go to edit and we can click on bake mesh maps or we can also do con control shift and b and we can uh, open up the baking menu now once we're inside of this baking menu we have a couple of things that we have to look out for so the first one is the output size. So the same as uh, 
So basically the same as the uh, document resolution that we set here. Uh, the same is with the bake. This will determine uh, what the quality of your uh, output maps are going to be. For now, let's uh, bake on 4K, not on 2K, because if we want to upgrade our uh, character textures to 4K, uh, we, uh, we need to have it set to 4K on the bake as well. If we bake on 2K resolution, if we uh, increase the resolution of our character to 4K, nothing will change on the maps. So let's set the output size to 4K. And uh, another important thing is to assign the high definition meshes. So this will be our exported high poly character. So uh, let's go back to ZBrush. So this character, we would have to export it. Uh, most of the time, what uh, you would want to do is decimate all of these, uh, all of these uh, meshes because the lower the poly count, the faster the bake will be. So uh, it is uh, good advice to just uh, decimate your character before you want to export it. On the high poly mesh, uh, it doesn't matter if we have UVs, uh, it doesn't matter if it's quads or triangles, the only thing that matters is the sculpt and the shapes of the character. And another thing that's very important is that both of these characters are uh, in the exact same uh, space. So in the sa exact same 3D space or uh, the exact same coordinates on the X, Y and Z axis. Uh, for now, let's go back to the Substance Painter. So uh, let's just assign the output size, select the high definition mesh that we want to use, so mushroom man high, and let's see what uh, our baking will actually do. So on the left side we can see which maps uh, the bake will uh, create. So it will create a normal map, a world space normal map, ID map, ambient occlusion, curvature, position and thickness. In the new substance painter we can also bake out a height map which is good when we actually want to bake out a height map, bent normals we don't really need for now, and opacity we don't really need uh, for now. So, uh, without going uh, too much into detail in, the, in all of these maps uh, and what they do, uh, let's just bake for now and uh, in later videos we're going to be learning a little bit more what each of these, uh, each of these maps do. For now, the most important one will be the normal map. Uh, another thing that we would have to do is uh, when we scroll down and we see the match button, you can click on that and we see that we have always and we have by mesh name. If it's a uh, match on always, it will always bake out everything. So no matter what your name is, so uh, if, let's say if, uh, if this is not named correctly, so back piece low, cap low is not properly named as back piece high and uh, vice versa, it will always bake out the model. If it's by mesh name, when it starts to bake, it will, uh, let's say on, on the cap, when it starts to bake the cap, it will uh, try to find uh, on the low poly, so let's say cap low, it will find the low poly mesh and in the high poly mesh it will find the corresponding mesh and it will only bake that part not the whole mesh which will lead to a lot of, a lot less artifacts and a better bake so if you don't have everything named uh, properly you can leave it uh, on the match as always and if you do have everything properly named you can leave it by mesh name also the anti-aliasing the more anti-aliasing that we do, so 2x2, 4x4 and 8x8, the better our bake will be, but these significantly increase your bake time. So let's say if you have a 2K map and put in a subsampling by 2x2, two two, it is going to be slower than the 4K map with no subsampling. Uh, right now, let's just put in a subsampling 2x2 two two on a 4K texture and let's bake so we have here bake mushroom man material now as it starts to bake we can see it creating the maps in real time
Okay. Once the bake is finished, so all of the maps are baked, we should have uh, check checks on, on each one of our maps. That means that we have no errors inside of our bake. And we can see that our character inside of Substance Painter now resembles the eye poly inside of ZBrush. Okay. Now, all of these details are fake details, as we like to say. So they are not actual uh, topology. If we see it from the, if we try to look at the character from the side, we can see that this is completely flat. So uh, this is not like displacement, not actually displacing the geometry, but rather just creating an illusion that there are uh, extra details on the mesh. Most of these details come from the normal map. So if we go to the texture set settings, we can see that we have a normal map. If we disable the normal map, we can see that all of those details are now gone. So if we control and Z to bring back the normal map, we can see that we have all of those details on our character. Uh, that's basically what the normal map does. So uh, we'll see the height map as well later on. But uh, just so you know, the normal map is the map that adds detail to your character, adds bumps, uh, normal map, or sometimes you might find it also known as bump map. But inside of uh, Substance Painter, we use normal maps. And what the normal maps uh, does is it uh, tells the lighting of the scene how it should affect the character. So you can see that uh, if we change the lighting, the shadowing on the character changes as well. This is a very cheap and easy way to bring a lot of details into your characters. Uh, the other maps, so World Space Normal, ID Occlusion, Curvature, Position, Thickness and Height, we'll look at them a little bit later. We can briefly just go over them right now. Uh, World Space Normal map is uh, not that important for you right now. The ID map as well, so the ID map we'll look at it in later classes. Uh, the occlusion map uh, is basically just uh, adding shadowing where uh, it think it will it should have. So ambient occlusion is basically like some sort of self shadowing. If we uh, see maybe this part of the character, I think this is the best part to see the ambient occlusion. Yeah, if we disable the ambient occlusion, we can see that it's a lot more flat than if we have the ambient occlusion enabled so it just adds that extra layer of detail on your character uh, the curvature map we'll look at that in later class as well this, this is used for uh, this is used for generators inside of uh, substance painter and the three maps below it we don't really need them right now as well okay so let's say that uh, we have our bake everything is good so if we uh, click on F1 and we see our bake, we can see that all of the details are generally uh, good uh, on the character. Now we can start to uh, actually paint our character. Even if you don't have a high poly mesh, so let's say, let's just for now disable all of these maps. Let's say that we don't have a high poly, uh, high poly character. So the only thing that we did inside of uh, ZBrush is we created uh, a low poly version, or maybe we don't actually have anything sculpted in our high poly version. Uh, we always want to bake nonetheless. So how do we do that? Is let's say we don't have this high poly version. We use the use low poly as high poly mesh like so. So now if we bake it, we can see that we won't have any details, but we still have the ambient occlusion, we have the curvature, and we have all of those maps still on the character. So it's good to bake it uh, anyways, even if you don't have a high poly mesh, just so that we can use it later on. Right now, let's just rebake it with the high poly. Like so.
I just forgot to disable the use low poly as high poly. And let's just rebake it again. Now it's good. And once we're done with that, we are ready to start painting our character. So now let's start the painting process. Uh, basically, we almost always want to go, uh, want to look at some reference and try to paint our character. For this character specifically, we already have it painted, so we can see that how it should look like uh, when it is painted. So let's start by uh, making some uh, fill layers and paint layers so that we can get the overall colors of the character. Uh, in this class, we're not going to be hand painting uh, the whole character. That's uh, we're going to learn about that in later videos. So for now, let's just look at some basic functions inside of Substance Painter. Now, uh, we already went over fill layers and paint layers. Just as a quick reminder, what are fill layers and paint layers? If we add uh, a paint layer, like so, we can start painting on the character. So if we scroll down to the bottom, uh, first of all, let's click on the brush. So now we want to paint, click on the brush, or we can click on one on our keyboard. We can maybe assign a color, something like this, to match our character a little bit. And we can start to see how it would paint on the character. So this is a paint layer. Now, what is the difference between a paint layer and a fill layer? If we add a fill layer, it will affect the whole character at once, like so. So let's start uh, at the beginning with a fill layer. Uh, on the fill layer, let's uh, add the primary color of our character. So we can see that on the body we have some something like a dark purple so we are going to assign a dark purple color maybe something like this we don't have to be too accurate because uh, in the uh, painting process we are going to be painting over this anyways we just need to have a base guideline of what the color scheme of our character should be like so Now we can also see that uh, the base character has, uh, is a lot more rough than it is right now. So let's just increase the roughness as well on the base layer. Now let's call this layer uh, maybe base body. And now uh, because we have only one uh, texture so we have only uh, one texture set or one material uh, we need to use uh, some sort of function to mask out the areas that we want to be purple so we can see that some of these areas are brown some of these areas are blue or green and we need to mask out basically uh, anything that we want to be purple now how do we do that is by creating a mask. If somebody has learned Photoshop before, Substance Painter works on a very similar uh, process. So we have layers that go on top of each other and we have masks. So in, uh, by clicking on uh, the second button here, we can add a mask and we have two options. We can add a white mask and we can add a black mask. Uh, these are basically the same thing. Uh, because they, 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 they serve the same purpose, but they have a different starting point. So if we add a white mask, nothing will happen because uh, in, in every 3D software and generally all uh, softwares, not only 3D, uh, how masks work are they are just a black and white images. So if we click on the mask here, we can see that our whole character is white now. Now, uh, the white uh, part of the mask means that the fill layer 
is what will show on to the character. If we have anything that is black colored, like so, it means that it, the fill layer will not show on the character. So the same as in any other software that, that you might encounter, black means that uh, anything on the mask uh, will not show through the character or through the layer and everything that is white will show onto the character. Now if we go back to the material, we can see that all of the black value is hidden. Uh, all of the everything that's under the black value is hidden from the fill layer, so it's masked out. Now if we go back to the body, we can see that we can change the color and it will only affect everything that's masked under white. Uh, let's clear this mask. So let's say we want to we want to clear this mask. What we can do is just right click on the mask and we can uh, click on clear mask. Now it will remove anything from the mask. Uh, let's see what the black mask does. So if we click on add black mask, we can see that it will mask out our whole character with the color black. Now if we try to paint, it will uh, only show everything that is white. So it's basically inversed. What we can also do is we can inverse the mask. So let's say we have this mask we can right click it and we can click on invert mask and now it will invert everything like so. Okay, let's Now let's clear the mask one more time. So click on the mask and click on clear mask. Now, uh, what we can do is paint over uh, our body. Like so. We can uh, click on one or click on the brush and we can paint over our character while we have the mask selected. So if you want to uh, paint on your character uh, with the mask, you have to click on the mask that you want to paint with, like so. Now, let's say that we accidentally go over some part that we don't want to be painted. Uh, how can we delete the mask is by uh, either going to the erase mode and we can start erasing the mask or uh, a better option is to click on X on your keyboard and that will inverse your value that you are painting. So right now we are not painting with uh, let's say a, a color. Now we're just painting black and white values. So if we click on X, we can see that the grayscale is going to flip and now we're, we can remove the mask. So whenever we click on X, it uh, inverts the color that we are painting with, like so. Now, uh, if we want to, let's say, fill this whole body up with one color, if we start to uh, hand paint it uh, uh, we start to manually paint it by hand. It's gonna take uh, quite a lot of time and not only it's gonna take a lot of time, but uh, it's gonna be very hard to be precise with our painting. So we can see that uh, it will mo most of the time it will go through other meshes and we would have to manually clean this up. And this is a lot of tedious work. Now, when we work uh, with paint layers or we work uh, with masks, we also have a different option of painting and that's with the polygon fill button. Now, uh, if we click on one, we can uh, have the paintbrush. If we click on two, we have the eraser. If we click on three, we have the projection. And if we click on four, we have the polygon fill. Now, what does this polygon fill option do? Well, we have four different uh, types of how we can uh, polygon fill our character. The first one is by triangles, even though our whole character is uh, made with quads, we can also paint triangles inside of our quads. The next one is the, uh, is the quads uh, polygon fill, and this will fill up anything in our character that is a quad. So we can also drag and fill everything in our character. Uh, all of the quads that we hover over on our character. Now, be careful when you uh, paint like this. So when you uh, use the polygon fill, because if you use the uh, polygon fill and you use the drag selection, it will also paint everything that is behind. So it's a little bit uh, tricky to paint like this. Now, the third option 
uh, it's probably the most useful one and that's the mesh fill option now if we click on the mesh fill option if we just click on the character we can see that it will fill everything that is uh, topologically connected so all of the topology that is connected uh, uh, inside of one mesh it will fill that whole topology now if we want to let's say remove everything else we can click on x to invert our color and let's say we click on the arm it will remove everything from the arm we click on the head and it will remove anything everything from the head now this is the the fastest and easiest way to fill out and block out the colors of your character now let's go through all of the other colors so we can see that we also need to have the head the cap the head and the arms with uh, the same color like so another color that we need to have is the brown color so we just add a new fill layer let's rename this one to base body and uh, name it to purple like so <laughs> now let's add a, another fill layer and click on that fill layer and select the uh, brown color so something like this maybe a little bit darker so a little bit more towards the red maybe something like this and now when we add uh, other colors to our character we don't want to uh, when we uh, when we create a fill there we only want to have the color channel of that material so uh what we're going to do is we're going to disable the height roughness metallic and normal so it will only affect the color of the character and nothing else now we can see that because we created a mask on our character the base roughness is now different between let's say the legs and the body a good practice is when you do colors uh, you only have on all of your fill layers you only have your color uh, your only your color channel on now what we can do is add another layer below it and only affect the roughness of the character now if we increase the roughness we can see that it will affect the whole character regardless of what's painted with which color like so now once we have the second color uh, on we can rename this to base body uh, brown and let's add a new black mask so add a black mask and let's see we need to have the fingers and we need to have the legs with that color so select all of our fingers and select our legs as well let's add another layer same as before we uh, disable all of the channels except for the color channel and now we add a bluish color to it so we go to blue maybe somewhere in between blue and green something like this a little bit darker and a little bit more bluish that's fine for now and base body blue we add a new black mask and now we just add the colors uh, we can actually see from behind what the character uh, is painted so let's just use our imagination and paint it how we want it uh, we already have three colors on our character so that's more than enough for now let's just reuse some of those colors let's say we want to add the shell to be a brown color like so and we want uh, these rings to be maybe a blue color like this Now we can see that we have the base colors of our character laid out. Once we have all of uh, these base colors, 
good practice is to group them up into a single layer and just uh, don't really touch that layer at all. So how do we group up layers? We click on the first one, we hold down shift and we click on the last one, control and uh, G to, uh, to create a group or a folder and rename the folder to uh, base colors or base body colors would be a better name for now base body colors now we can see the base or the block out colors of our character after this the next step is to start painting the character so for example we can add a new paint layer the same as before so right now we are basically just painting a base color nothing more so we can use the uh, only the color channel so we disable in the material we disable all channels except for the color channel and we can start to paint our character now uh, let's start with maybe the eye we can see that uh, it has a bright pink outline so let's select a pink color something like this maybe a little bit lighter that's okay for now and now we can see that our character is actually painted symmetrically so uh to paint it symmetrically it's hard to do it by hand and the same as in any other software in uh, substance painter we also have symmetry so we can see that uh and on the top bar, we have a button here that enables the symmetry of our character. Now, because this character is not completely uh, symmetrical, so the left side and the right side of our character are not the same, we can see that the uh, middle line where uh, uh, the symmetry crosses over on our character is not actually in the middle of the character. What we can do is click on the third button and we can move the symmetry a little bit to the right and try to eyeball it to be in the middle of the character like so i think this is fine for now and now we can start to paint our character now in today's video we're not going to be learning how to hand paint this whole character we're going to be learning about that uh, later on so for now Just try to uh, get some details onto your character. Now, once we finish a character with all of our paint layers, fill layers, we add a lot more detail. So our final character finished would look something like this. This one has around 25 or so layers. Uh, it doesn't really matter how many layers you have. It only uh, matters the final output of your character. So we can see that uh, with uh, this version, it is completely finished and it's uh, hand painted on every single part now 
uh, hand painting characters we'll learn in uh, a couple more classes so for now just uh, try to uh, try to paint as much as you can and try try to get uh, the most out of the character you have in front of you so uh, for now that's all